All right, let's look at some jshell commands. I'm going to start a new instance of a jshell session, and I'm going to run a couple of commands, one plus one, and then a string hello. These are assigned to scratch variables. I have an int i equals 10, and then i plus 10. You have a bunch of commands over here. There are some things you can do in jshell to make your life simple, interacting with the shell, navigating the commands and all that stuff. I'm going to start with a bunch of those commands. First of all, as is obvious with most of the shells that you would probably be, have used already, you can use the up and down arrows to navigate between the commands that you've already entered. So here I press the up arrow, I get the last command that I executed. Another up arrow, I get the command before that. Another up arrow before that, and I can press the down arrow to go back in the other way. I can use this command called slash history to print all the commands that I have executed so far. So here are all the commands that I've executed slash history gives you that. That's specific to this session, of course, but it gives you all the commands that I've executed. Better than history, the command that I like to use when I'm looking up previous commands is a slash list. Slash list is a little bit different from slash history. There are a couple of differences. The first thing is that with slash history, you get all the commands that you've executed, including the jshell commands. You see there is Java commands and jshell commands together. However, slash list gives you just the Java commands and not the jshell commands. Slash list gives me the commands, but it gives me those commands in a numerical order with one number assigned to each command. Why is this important? This is important because I can actually look up the command by the serial number and then rerun those commands. So for instance, I were to type slash one, slash indicates that this is a jshell command, and I can just type in the name of the line that I'm interested in, and I just hit enter, and it actually pulls up the command that I had run based on that serial number, and it actually re-executes it. And it creates, here it happens to create a new scratch variable because this happened to be an expression. But if I were to rerun three, so I do slash three, it reapplies the declaration int i, and then it assigns it a value of 10. So for instance, if I had i equals 20, and then I do slash three again, it reapplies i int i equals 10, and now if I type the value of i, it is now 10. What you have to remember when you reapply is that it reapplies the command as if you were typing it again. It doesn't remember the state of the command. So for instance, i plus 10 uh, over here printed the value of 20 because at the time of execution, i happen to have a value of 10. Now let's say I set the i value to 100. And now if I were to reapply this particular line, I do that by slash four, it is going to re-execute the command, but it is going to obviously take the values at the current state. So here i happens to be the value of 100. So i plus 10, even though it's re-executed from a previous command, it takes the current value of i and it applies the value of 100 plus 10 is 110 and that applies to $11, right? So I can do a slash list again and here you see all the commands that we have executed. Another shortcut is to just rerun the previous command. So if you don't want to look up the command number, you just want to re-execute the last command, I can just type slash and then the exclamation point, and it is going to reapply, re-execute the last command that we executed. In this case, it happens to be a lookup itself. So it reapplies i plus 10, it re-executes i plus 10, and you get a new scratch variable as a result. Another th command that's common to a lot of the uh, shell operating system shells is the reverse lookup. So I can type control R and then I can search for commands. So I can search by typing in a character and then it is going to look up the first occurrence backwards that has that character anywhere in that command. So if I type I, it finds that I plus 10 was the last command which contained the value of I. So it looks it up and then I hit enter, it is going to rerun that command. So for instance, let's try the expression, which is a string, hello. So I'm going to do control R, and then it's going to the search mode, and I type in the character H, and it's going to look up this string expression, hello, which was the last command which had that character. I hit enter, and it is going to execute that particular command. Control S is the forward search. So if you're going back and forth, you can execute previous and subsequent commands by typing Control-R and Control-S and then searching for those commands.
I can do a control C to exit from that search mode if I don't want to proceed further with the search. Uh, the final command that I want to leave you with in this video is this slash reset command. What this is going to do is reset the state of the current session. Now, if I were to do a slash reset and then type in what are the available variables for me, they're going to be empty because it has essentially reset all the work that we've done in this particular session. There's a handy way to do a complete reset of state without having to exit the session and go back into JShell. It's a quick shortcut, but use it with care because obviously whatever work you've done in that session is going to be reset. So these are some handy commands which are JShell specific, but kind of makes your life easier when you're working with JShell, so it's good to know.